Page 54. Everyone in Nauvoo knew that the Partridge girls lived with Joseph a long time before he got his celebrated revelation about celestial marriage, dated July 12, 1843. The Partridge girls were very good-natured. After Joseph's death, one was sealed to uh, Brigham and the other to Apostle Lyman. Joseph's taste was of a very large dimension. He loved them old and young, pretty and homely. He sometimes seduced mothers to keep them quiet about the connection with their daughters. There was an old woman called Durfee. She knew a great deal about the prophet's amorous adventures, and to keep her quiet, he admitted her to the secret blessings of celestial bliss. <clears throat> I admitted her. I don't think that she was ever sealed to him, though it may have been the case after Joseph's death and the temple was finished. Now this did occur, I have over here the uh, Nauvoo Endowment Company's history, and it's by Mormons. <laughs> That's a turtle. And Lucinda Morgan was sealed to uh, Joseph for eternity with Brigham Young and uh, John D. Lee as witnesses. Anyhow, so, at all events, she boasted here in Salt Lake of having one of Joseph's wives, having been one of Joseph's wives. Heber C. Kimball and Brigham Young took the lion's share of the division of Joseph's wives after his death. Joseph had a number of lady friends, sealed or not sealed, and permitted him to use their houses as a kind of assignation house for rendezvous with other women. Well, you know, She's an apostate, so I guess we can't believe Miss Sarah Pratt. Again, Joseph did not content himself with his spiritual brides who surrendered themselves to him for Christ's sake. There lived on the Mississippi, near the steamboat landing, a certain young woman, a Mrs. White, very pretty and always very fashionably dressed. She was in the habit of being very hospitable to the captains of the steamboats. Joseph was one of her customers and used to contribute to the expense of her establishment. Well, some of these are hard to believe. All right. Here the poor woman gave me a description of the scene which was surely calculated to sh shake even the most fanatic faith, but this was not all, she said. Whenever Mrs. Ford came home from St. Louis, he used to complain about business. I can't understand it. When I'm here, money comes in all the time, and when I'm not here, not a red cent gets to the house. The explanation was very simple. <laughs> Whenever Joseph had prayed <clears throat> with Mrs. Ford, she used to give him all the money in the till to the last cent. Since that time, I do ask myself sometimes whether Joseph was really the right kind of prophet. Page 59. You hear often that Joseph had no polygamous offspring. The reason of this is very simple. Abortion was practiced on a large scale in Nauvoo. Dr. John C. Bennett, the evil genius of Joseph, brought his abomination into the scientific system. He showed to my husband and me the instruments with which he used to operate for Joseph. There was a house in Nauvoo right across the flat, about a mile and a half from the town, a kind of hospital. They sent the women there, and when they showed signs of celestial consequence, abortion was practiced regularly. I'm not going to read all of her testimony, just the good stuff. You can read it, though. In May of 86, I had a fresh interview with Mrs. Sarah Pratt, who had the kindness to give me the following testimony, additional to the information given by her in our interviews of the spring of 85. I want you to have all my statements correct in your book, said the noble lady, and put my name to them. I want the truth, the full truth, to be known and to bear the responsibility of it. I have told you that Prophet Joseph used to frequent houses of ill fame. Mrs. White, a very pretty and attractive woman, once confessed to me that she made a business of it to be hospitable to the captains of the Mississippi steamboats.